and welcome to the Gardens of Ventura County. I'm your host, Patty Pagaling, with Transition to Organics. And today, our episode is all about food safety. Recently, food safety has been a major concern for consumers with the proliferation of the use of pesticides and pesticide-ready genetically modified foods or GMOs flooding the marketplace. Fortunately for us here locally, we have a number of great organic farms and outlets. Today we'll be speaking all about organic farming with one of the county's leading experts, Steve Sprinkle, owner of Gozo Farms and Farmer and the Cook Organic Restaurant and Market here in Miners Oaks. Thank you for joining us here on the Gardens of Ventura County. When you think of our national forests, you think of the wonders of nature, wood for our homes, or scenic beauty. You may not think of the water you drink, but our forests help replenish our rivers and streams during dry times and keep our lakes and reservoirs clean. But those forests are being devastated by disease and fire. The Arbor Day Foundation asks for your help in replanting our national forests. Visit arborday.org. See how, together, we can plant our future. Steve Sprinkle on his farm in Ojai, Gozo Farm. So welcome to the show, Steve. Could you tell us Thank a little you. bit about what you're, you're growing here today? Well, today we're transplanting organic transplants into this field here. And this is the last time we'll be able to plant winter crops. It's, uh, what is it, the 11th of February. So all this will be done by May, April and May. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, uh, then we'll probably plant pumpkin and, and hard squash in it. Mm -hmm. So before th this before this was planted last summer, this had chili peppers in it. So this is a crop rotation. Mm -hmm. So you go from one completely different kind of crop to another to another. So Great. most of these are going to be in the uh, in what they call the brassica family or. Um, the, uh, like broccoli. the broccoli, kale, cabbage, Chinese cabbage, things like that. Other ones are kind of neutral, like uh, fennel. I'm going to plant some carrots in there. So these, these uh, 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 fennels kind of it doesn't it doesn't really have too many problems with diseases. You know, and that's what you're trying to stay away from diseases and. Uh, bug problems and yeah. things like that. Well, today we, we wanted to focus on food safety. That has a lot to do with no pesticides and no GMOs and you know, clean water. Right. So, um, well, we know that you're pesticide free and <clears throat> we're hoping that our water is, is fairly clean here. Uh, well, I should, let's, well, uh, talking about waters, because water really is one of the most important things. And, uh, and so I'm sharing the same water that, that everyone is, uh, who's drinking out of a municipal well. Uh, Miner Soaks uh, Water District, uh, the Ventura County River Water District, um, uh, Casitas, and the other uh, water servers that take water that's essentially the underground water from the Ventura River. We all communicate with that, that aquifer. Mm -hmm. And then the use of, for instance, all the Roundup on the rundo has been a concern, especially since we're not um, we're not testing for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, right now, of course, we discussed that last time we were, we were talking that we don't we still don't know, and it's really not on their radar. So water is an important thing. And and this farm was a was a, this honor farm was a, was a county honor farm that was um, that was maintained by the county. The EPA closed it down because they had overstocked it with livestock. Hmm. And the nitrate levels in the water were of, were so high that it was no longer potable, wow. and that was nine years ago. And it was of concern to the Ventura River County Water District, whose whose well is 200 yards from mine. So we're still we're in the same aquifer. Actually, if I irrigate too much, I dry him up. Hmm. I will I will dry his wells up. So I have an agreement with them to not irrigate like I, I don't I used to put 140 sprinklers on but I never do that and so 
Um, so they and they have those records, and so those records, the, the nitrate level has gone down every year since then. Last time I looked at it was 2007 or so, right around the time I started. So that was one of the conditions for me to lease this land, was that uh, I had to be organic. I don't use manure or manure-based compost, and of course manure or manure-based compost would also have you nitrate. know, have nitrates in it. Yeah. And so I use uh, organic uh, soybean meal for fertilizer, for nitrogen. You're essentially always looking for nitrogen. Um, phosphorus, potassium, sulfur, calcium, the other majors that, that you're looking for um, are, are abundant in here. And, and if there was a problem, you'd see it. But if I don't put nitrogen down, you can see it. Mm. So, for example, in the winter, things will turn a little purple, and that means you're short on phosphorus. But in, as soon as it warms up again, the phosphorus is released into the, into the soil by um, the microbes and just the, the warmth of the soil. Mm -hmm. So I'm not too concerned about that. So that, that's, one, that's one source of contamination uh, for the aquifer. And then also, um, uh, in terms of uh, food safety, um, uh, I adopted this program about eight years ago. I personally didn't want to deal with the manure and the compost. I was buying compost from Bakersfield, from anonymous, huge conventional dairies. They were feeding the cattle ge genetically modified feed. I didn't know what was in it. They were antibiotics, carryover, whatever, you know, like it's a dirty world. And so I, I said, I, I just don't want to deal with this kind of anonymous uh, material anymore and I had always experimented with alternatives and so I used flaxseed meal, alfalfa meal and soybean meal and soybean meal for the purposes of the um, uh, nitrogen and uh, the ease in planting and the safety matter it was, was, it was a natural thing to, to uh, use. So every time we have one of these um, E. coli breaks you know, an, an outbreak of, of, of E. coli 0157, and people ask me about it, I say, not on my farm. I didn't know if, for instance, all the antibiotics that they were feeding the animals would survive the composting program. You know, I mean, it's a, you know, they, 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 they should have volatized. What does volatized mean? Volatize uh, means uh, to be dissipated in the air. So in other words, it's, 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 it's active in, in the atmosphere. And so we would think that those things would be volatized, all those things would they'd be gassed off, they would change, the, the composting process would have changed it. But then thereafter we discovered that actually the, um, the, the antibiotics were present in the vegetables. Maybe we should be a little precautionary about using these kinds of materials, especially things that are sourced off, off of conventional agriculture. Your uh, take on the GMO labeling campaign right now, it, it's, pretty, it's, it's a serious issue, right? Well, it's a very serious issue. I think this may be the last chance that, that uh, organic farmers, consumers, and the, just the general public, the public who has no idea um, what's at stake here, this is the last chance we probably have to get something done with this. I've been working in this sector for about 17 years. Basically, um, the um, Monsanto, since they bought Seminus, a very large vegetable seed producer, about six or seven years ago, since then, they have been testing uh, and, and, and creating genetically modified carrots, cabbage, lettuce, and all that. They've been That's testing. That's right here in Ventura County, right? Seminus is here in Ventura County, and their seed tests, I don't know where they are, but I understand, I've read, that, that they do these tests in the open field <clears throat> to determine whether or not the genetically modified crop is efficacious, if it works or not. And so these GMO vegetable crops are all over the place. We just don't know where they are. They don't mark them. There's no... You know, they, and then, then they're allowed to, to go to seed as well. So, so and the seed this can blow onto the, well, the that, but all the, actually, what's worse is that the, the 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 attributes of the modification can be transferred by the air by by insects. The pollen. The, yeah. yeah. So an organic a, a GMO cabbage crop, if it's allowed to flower, may go and and contaminate another member of that family or a cabbage, and so you mm -hmm. may have traces or traits of these genetic attributes in those seeds. We're, we're talking about genetically modified organisms and from what I understand they're less nutritious because the plants aren't able to uptake 
the nutrients in the soil and also they've been causing a lot of damage in the animals that are being tested. Yeah, um, I can't speak directly about the nutritive value of these things. Everybody knows by, t by, by research that organically grown produce is a product of all the things that went into growing it. Instead of a, of a, of a synthetic chemical used to, to produce it, the plant is, is made up of cells and, 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 uh, and its structure is made up of, of organically produced material. And, and I think as far as the, as far as the, 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 um, the food value of these crops, if you look back at what's happened with the genetically modified crops that are in the livestock sector, 90% of all the corn, a large percentage, 95% of all the soybeans are all produced for, genetically modified soybeans are produced for livestock. And that's essentially their entire diet are those crops now. And there are um, uh, uh, very hard won pieces of information anecdotal as well as research where all of a sudden um, Iowa hog raisers will, will go through a huge um, uh, uh, portion of their of their uh, production system uh, all the all the hogs will die suddenly or they will be infertile and there's all these all these anecdotes that keep on floating I mean I, I ran into it 12 years ago when I was working in the field in um, in the Midwest and now th these things are still ha happening so these 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 uh, uh, questions are still coming up um, uh, one of the one of the most uh, obvious uh, uh, examples of it is recombinant bovine growth hormone given to dairy cattle modified substance that improves or increases the amount of milk they get and uh, this has led to uh, uh, um, uh, early turnover with their herd. In other words, a cow that might have given milk for, for at least um, uh, seven to nine years, let's say, was now out of the system after four or five. And this is the, the, all of this information is out there for anyone to read, that there's a, just a higher turnover in the dairy industry because it's harder on the cattle. There's also an increased amount of disease in the cattle, for cattle, for example, mastitis in dairy cattle is 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 exacerbated by the use of this hormone. And then thereafter, uh, the, the consumers uh, recognized that they didn't want to have this anymore. So that was one of the first big victories that we got in the fight. Was uh, a lot of dairy producers elected to say on the label of their milk carton, uh, no um, RGBH or no BST. But still, there's this big question. Like, none of this has ever been tested for, for in question of human health. Uh, it, it's it's our it, 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 it's it's it, we're the guinea pigs. So mm -hmm. the, the test is, is here in the general populace, and that leaves anyone open to say, is this a reason why there's an advanced amount of autism, Alzheimer's, yeah, attention deficit disorder, my, um, you know, all these, all these. These uh, these these um, uh, diseases that are on the uptick all of a sudden that are 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 uh, huge you know and these percentages are, are immense now whereas uh, 40 years ago they, they weren't even talked about yeah well one of the problems too is genetically modified uh, seed is that it can be sprayed with so much of the oh, yeah. herbicide or the you know, whatever they, they want to yeah, spray That's kind of preposterous it. that, that, that you, in order to ban, gain the benefit of the, of, the, of the genetically modified soybeans, the Roundup Ready, as they say, Roundup Ready soybeans, is you have to spray the crop with Roundup. You have to spray the food product with Roundup, with an herbicide directly. That's not done in, in, in common conventional agriculture because mm -hmm. the farmer has to be careful that he doesn't damage his crop because it will lead to, you know, death of the, of the crop. So, so. What What do you do for uh, um, your pesticide program here on the farm? Um, the basic, well, the basic, basically, is a pre it's prevention. Basically, it's prevention. Pre prevention is the best, best success. So I prevent pests by growing a beneficial insect habitat. Right now, I'm now I'm starting to see the ladybugs come in, so they're a little too late. And so I'm, I grow crops intentionally that will attract ladybugs, they'll, and they'll stay here and lace wings. And I and I buy lace wing larvae, and I disperse lace wing larvae that then eat them. And so I, I hope for a symbiosis, and sometimes I don't get it.
but I've been farming for 35 years, so you know, that's it. I I I I definitely have more success and failures. But really, prevention is is the keystone for the whole thing. In, in that, with crop rotations and and then having a wide variety of things out here. I don't have any trouble really on my lettuce right now. I don't really have any trouble on all that kale. This 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 block over here is clean. Mm -hmm. So the the uh, then in terms of like an, an intervention, the best thing that you can use is, uh, for example, when you have worms that are the larva of moths and butterflies, is a material called Bacillus thuringiensis, which is a naturally occurring microbe or pesticide that is that essentially it's a it's a, a, a toxin that's that is extreme uh, that's uh, that, that's found in this uh, microbe um, bacillus thuringiensis the bacterium I guess mm -hmm. so they 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 uh, they observed this in the field 30 years ago did the test identified the material now they can they can manufacture the material in the lab then the farmer can buy it and spray it on lettuce or cabbage that's in trouble mm -hmm. behind us you have the people that are working in the field and some of them are volunteers and some of them yes. are being paid yes um, Greta works for me at, at my grocery store in the restaurant. She's a produce manager. And then John Faniff is uh, my, um, a uh, employee. He works in, in marketing. And he's also sort of uh, uh, my uh, canary in the coal mine because he is always trying to develop, uh, pushing the envelope towards, uh, for example, packaging is a, is a big issue with John. And so he, 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 does, he handles a lot of packages at the farmer's market, and because of John, we, we we're adopting uh, more and more strategies to get rid of plastic. All right. And, uh, and, it's, and it's working. It's working just by, by trying to convince consumers on a one-to-one -one basis. And, and you have a, an organic restaurant in town. Yes, too. the Farmer and the Cook in Miner's Oaks is uh, an all-organic restaurant and bakery and uh, grocery store. And uh, it's on El Roblar Drive, and we've been open for 11 years, and we have about 26 employees. And it's a very busy, very hopefully happy place. So this is our organic, successful pest control yeah. area. Exactly. So what? And so this is what you call a diversified market planting. So in other words, every block that I have out here. Is the, is, the, is of the same type, and um, uh, and uh, just like they say, just like they they say in in the in the organic farming books, that if you plant or use garlic or anything in the onion family, that it is a good repellent mm -hmm. to aphids and other kinds of bugs. And so here you have leeks. These these onions here are leeks, and they are protecting. The lettuce in here and these and these beets. Mm. So there's no pests in here, and one of the reasons why is because everything is kind of staggered and and and, and, uh, and they also I also have crops that are attracting bugs like see those flowering bok choy. Like I, I mean they're gailan in, in the Chinese vegetable. I harvested those once, and then the second sprouts came up, and we let them go to see, go to flower like that because I had too much broccoli to pick on the other block and so I just let it go. So that's for the bees and to attract yeah. beneficial insects. So there's a lot of beneficial insects that are living in there. So when that's all done, then I'll rototill the whole thing, we'll start all over again. This, this crop here um, is, is essentially uh, completely self-defensive. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. I know not a, not a worm, I haven't sprayed anything on it. So this is all, the romaine will go as romaine, and then all the other colored lettuce will be the salad mix. Then over here is uh, what they call a cover crop, and it's a, a nitrogen-fixing nitrogen, nitrogen fixing, um, crop of uh, Austrian peas. And so that's another method that you use to uh, create organic matter, provide nitrogen, and also um, keep the soil uh, out of trouble. So what advice do you have for the home gardener for successful pest control program? Well, I would, I, in, in the home garden too, it's the, same, it's the same program where you would have a diversity of, of things. You wouldn't try to load up on, on only one thing like cucumbers because, of course, a, a home gardener wouldn't want to do that. A home gardener is going to have 
oh, at least six or seven different kinds of things growing, but you want to have it in a rotation so you don't replicate kale in the same piece of ground or broccoli in the same ground every year. Mm. And you want, to, you want to have a rotation of things from one kind of crop to another. So, for example, I have maps of everything that I plant. So I never, yeah. I never go back in here with, you know, for, for a year or two with the same thing. So, and I have plenty of land to farm on, so this will be in lettuce and this will be in cucumbers. Mm -hmm. And that down there was in cucumbers and, and, and zucchini last summer. And then this coming year, it'll be in uh, chili peppers and bell peppers. So you see, you, you change things around so that um, you try to preclude or prevent uh, a problem with soil diseases. Soil diseases are, are really a big issue with uh, farming and gardening. Mm -hmm. Mildew um, and uh, bacterial leaf spot, bacterial leaf drop on, on bell peppers is a big problem. And you, you really don't want to lose your leaves of the bell peppers in the summer because all your fruit will get burned mm -hmm. by the sun. This, this area over here next to the artichokes uh, was in um, peppers last summer. I planted a cover crop on it. It didn't do very well because it didn't rain enough. So now I'm going to rototill it all down and, pre and prepare it to plant corn on. Beautiful. Then when I'm done with the corn, I'll knock it down and I'll probably plant uh, late cucumbers or something like that. You see? Mm -hmm. We're here with Steve Sprinkle, an organic farmer in Ojai at Gozo Farm, and we're looking for the best advice for the backyard gardeners for pest control and how to go organic. So where can people buy your organic produce? Well, at, at the Farmer and the Cook in Miner's Oaks. Every, I have all the things I grow here, I sell there. I also have a CSA, which is a buying club. It stands for Community Supported Agriculture. And people can sign up um, for that uh, either on our website, farmerandcook.com, or by going to the store and signing up there in person. And we also go to the Ojai Farmer's Market every Sunday. So is, is the CSA a kind of a program where you purchase per week? The... You actually, you purchase, uh, you make a commitment at least for a month. You pay for a month and then every week you come and pick it up. Uh, we're kind of flexible. Some CSAs expect people to have, uh, to make a commitment for three months. And um, since people have been reluctant to do that, I just go on a monthly basis. I have some attrition. That's bound to happen anyway. We'd like to thank you, Steve Sprinkle, for appearing on the program, and we'll come back and visit you another time. Thanks very Thanks. much, Patty. It's a pleasure. Thanks. Come anytime. Thanks. Thank you at home for viewing. We're here at Gozo Farms in Ojai with Steve Sprinkle.